Hey y'all. I have another scary story for you guys. I picked out two stories from the subreddit. These are fictional no sleep stories. Trying to get back into these. I love these stories. They're always so amazing. And so I'm super excited to read these. We're gonna hop right in. This first story says, Stalker in the Shadows. I had always loved living in my quaint suburban neighborhood. The streets were lined with trees that burst into a riot of colors every fall. And the air was always filled with the comforting hum of everyday life. That is, until the strange occurrences began. It started subtly. One night while watching TV, I noticed my favorite mug was missing from its usual spot on the coffee table. I chalked it up to my absent-mindedness, figuring I must have left it in the kitchen, but it wasn't there either. I found it the next day neatly placed on my bedside table, a place I would never leave it. A few days later, I began hearing soft tapping noises at odd hours of the night. At first, I dismissed them as the house settling or the wind playing tricks, but the sounds became more persistent, rhythmic, as if someone was deliberately tapping on the walls. Sleep became elusive, and I found myself waking up at 3.15 a.m. every night, drenched in a cold sweat. One evening, I came home from work to find my door slightly ajar. My heart raced as I stepped inside, expecting to find a burglar or some sign of forced entry, but nothing was out of place, nothing missing. Everything was eerily perfect. The door, it seemed, had unlocked itself. The next day, I installed new locks and security cameras. For a while, things seemed to return to normal, but one night, I reviewed the footage out of curiosity, and at 3.15 a.m., the camera in my living room captured a shadow moving across the room. The figure was barely discernible, but it sent chills down my spine. It moved with purpose, walking straight to the camera and disabling it. Paranoia set in. I felt watched, exposed. I started noticing small changes around the house, the slight rearrangement of books on my shelf, the subtle shift in my clothes hung in the closet. It was as if somebody was living in my space, manipulating my environment just enough to make me doubt my sanity. Determined to catch the intruder, I set up a series of traps. Small, almost unnoticeable things like threads across doorways and flowers sprinkled on the floor. The next morning, I found the thread broken and fate footprints in the flower, leading from my bedroom to the front door. The realization that someone had been in my room while I slept was horrifying. I decided to stay awake that night, armed with my dad's old baseball bat. I sat in the dark, eyes glued to the monitors, waiting. At 3.15 a.m., the figure appeared again. My heart pounded as I saw it move through my house with eerie familiarity. I jumped up, ready to confront whoever it was. I flung open my bedroom door, only to find an empty hallway. The figure was nowhere to be seen. I checked the footage again, but this time there was nothing. No shadow, no movement, just static. Defeated and terrified, I contacted the police. They took my statement, but without concrete evidence, there was little they could do. I felt more alone than ever. Days turned into weeks and the disturbances continued. The shadow, the tapping, the feeling of being watched, it all persisted. My friends and family grew concerned for my mental health. I started to believe I was going crazy. One night as I lay in bed, too exhausted to stay awake, I heard a whisper. A low, insidious voice that seemed to come from everywhere and nowhere. You can't stop me, it said. I know everything about you. I bolted upright, heart racing. The whisper continued, detailing intimate knowledge of my life things no one else could know. I felt a cold hand brush against my cheek and I screamed. The next morning I packed a bag and left, abandoning my beloved home. I moved to a different city, changed my name and tried to start anew. But even now, in the dead of night, I wake up at 3.15 a.m., heart pounding, convinced I hear a whisper in the dark. The craziest part, the police later found evidence that someone had indeed been in my house, but they never caught the person. Honestly, the thought that a human could orchestrate such a meticulous and terrifying campaign against me is almost worse than any ghost or demon I could ever imagine. I thought it was going to be a ghost like the entire time, like a shadow person or something. Like, I don't know. And the fact that, oh my God, I don't like that at the end it was a person. I absolutely hate that at the end it was a person because uh, just a shadow in the dark and it's just a person living in your house. I literally can't. That's horrifying. That is horrifying. This next story says, have you seen the night hag? I would like to start this off by saying when I was younger, I had night terrors. I'd wake up in the middle of the night and think that Michael Myers was chilling in the corner of my room and then my parents would find me walking in circles around the coffee table crying like crazy. 
I remember multiple times where I would wake up to them shaking me awake. For some strange reason, I always hated my mom's bedroom doorway. It sat at the end of a long, dark hallway, and I would always imagine a small, hunched-over, elderly woman in tattered clothes leaping out of the darkness and shuffling over to me like Pennywise in the basement scene from It. it scared the crap out of me as a child, and the thought of it to this day still gives me the creeps. I never really told anyone because I thought it was just my imagination. Over time, I've grown out of these sleep episodes. I'm in my 20s now, getting my filmmaking degree at the LA Film School, and we recently had a screenwriting course where we had to come up with an original idea for a script. Instantly, my mind went back to the old woman. I considered writing a horror script about her, so I started it and was doing good, had a few pages in, and I went to bed for the night. For the first time in probably 10 years, I saw her again. I woke up and tried to sit up in bed, but couldn't move. My bare chest was wet from sweat, and the sheets clung to me. I felt something, a presence, in the corner of my room. My eyes could only barely see her, but then she shuffled to the end of the bed. Her long, claw-like fingers reached up the edge of the bed, and I could feel her breathe as she climbed onto my chest and was inches from my face. Then I woke up. What in the Freddy fucking Krueger did I just experience? I fell back asleep, and then the next day I considered taking a few days away from the project to clear my head. I decided to go with my sister to the park to let her kids play on the playground, and we sat at the benches nearby and I told her about my dream last night. I started explaining about my dream, about how the hag climbed onto my chest, and I remembered her from childhood. She looked the same, her clothes ripped up and her hair down in her face. My sister finished my sentence. Yes, I replied. Then she started telling me how she had always had a vision of the woman climbing out of our mom's room. If it was a dream or sleep paralysis, how would we both have experienced this as children? We were freaked out to say the least, and I considered changing the topic of my project. I went home that night, and after eating dinner and stuff, I went to bed. I woke up again, but this time I was moving around my coffee table, and she was holding my hand, leading me in circles. The shock of the moment jolted me awake, and I woke up standing in the middle of my apartment. It makes no sense, and I decided to try and do some research about it, and the only thing I can find is the night hag. It's basically an alternate version of the shadow people most people see when they have a sleep paralysis episode. The only time my sister remembers having an episode was when she was younger. She had a small dog and she woke up at night. The dog was at the edge of her bed barking towards the dark hallway. She said she got up and walked down the hallway and a man grabbed her and put a plastic bag over her face. Then she woke up gasping and the dog was on alert barking at the dark hallway. I considered going to a sleep therapist and doing a sleep study or something to figure this out, but. I'm not sure. I, on the other hand, do not remember ever having an episode like that, so I'm not sure what the hag is or why me and my sister both have vivid visions of her coming from my mom's bedroom, but dear Miss Hag, even though you're in my head, please let's not meet again. I hated that one too, because now I'm gonna see the hag tonight when I'm sleeping peacefully, I'm gonna wake up, like I'm not even joking. The way my cabinets are, like, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I have like dark brown cabinets, but I woke up in the middle of the night last night and swore it was a cow. Like my cabinets were a cow just in my kitchen. I don't know why, so I will see anything and now I'm gonna see the old hag. These were super short and I apologize for that. Also, Nar was like squeaking during the second story. His meow is still so bad. He's been on steroids. I don't know what it is. I'm gonna have to make him another appointment because it's honestly getting worse. Like, he's still acting totally fine. But I just, like, I don't understand why he, like, lost his voice and it's been months, dude. But anyways, those are really short. I apologize for that. But if you have any other creepy, fictional, no sleep stories you want to share with me or the community, I will have my subreddit linked down below. I don't have any rambling to do at the end of this video, but on Sunday I am uploading a more personal video about something that was going on in my life um, over the last couple months. It's a hard video for me to upload, I'm not even gonna lie, I'm a little nervous, but I think it is for the best that I update you guys on what the fuck has been happening. But I'm gonna go, I love you guys, I will see you in the next one, bye.